now it's time for some sports stories from across the globe. Aaron Akere Jola joins us in the studio. Hello, Aaron. Yeah, very good morning to you. you? Goodbye. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning to you, Rafai. Good morning yeah. to you, Doctor. Let's get it started with the list for the Super Eagles as the countdown is officially on and we are getting closer to that particular major sporting event, which is the Olympics. Paris 2024 kicking off on the 26th of July. And the Super Falcons at the moment, of course, at the moment, it's, it's, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding the list that has been released by Randy Wildrum, the coach of the, um, of the side. The Super Falcons have not been to the Olympics since 2008 when Beijing and China, Beijing, China actually hosted the Olympics. This is the first time in a very long time, in over a decade, that the Super Falcons will be putting out a list that does not involve Francesco Odega and also Onoma AB. It has not really rubbed the ladies right in the... It did not rub them in the right way, and they've actually made their feelings known. But the team will be departing for Spain today, begin camping for another two weeks, before moving from Seville to Paris for the games. They are in that particular group that everyone seems to be asking questions. Can the Super Falcon survive? But Australia and New Zealand is a testament to what the nine-time African champions can actually do. Away from that, Wuban Day is still... Um, hot and at the moment, of course, let's talk about the fact that Akaraz is on course to defend what he won last time out. And at the All English Club, once again, Akaraz showing his metal and going against Vukic and actually defeating him there. For the women, the one that stood out aside the fact that Osaka has actually crashed out is the fact that Emma Raducanu, the one time US Open champion also was able to beat Mertens on the day convincingly. A very dominant performance from the Brit, and she'll be hoping that she can capture the form that saw her win the US Open back in the day. And later on today, we'll see the likes of Nova Djokovic and the gang in action. Iga Siatek will also be in action today. Well, let's talk about Manchester United. Of course, the news actually coming in that Sir Jim Ratcliffe has been doing a major shake-off. And more importantly, not just the shake-off alone, the talk is that 250 members of staff will be fired in the coming days from the 1,100 that are actually on the books of Manchester United, talking about staffs, probably kitchen staffs, um, physio staffs, and the rest of them. They actually, as you say, put in the fat, literally. And that's what Sir Jim Ratcliffe has actually decided to do. So in the coming days, uh, we're hearing that the staff, are, they've not really been happy with Jim Ratcliffe because he decided to cut out their Christmas party refused them to actually celebrate with players when they won the when they won the FA Cup and he has gone on to do this also. But let's see how that one actually goes. Away from Manchester United, let's talk about one man who is seemed to be finding his feet again. His name is Finidi George. And yesterday one particular club, Rivers United, decided to unveil him as their new head coach on a two-year deal. And kudos to him, he will be going back to his boyhood club. The Potoko boy will be handling a Potoko team. So kudos to him finding his feet once again. And as he stands right now, putting aside all the drama that came with the Super Eagles job and the fallout thereof. So Finiti George will be the coach of the 2022 MPFL winners, Rivers United. And he will be unveiled today at the Shark Stadium. And finally, one man has been speaking and throwing punches left, right, and center. Former Super Eagles captain, former Super Eagles coach, Song Diogo Chukuolise. This is what he had to say on the Elegbete Caucus. I think, I think the boy needs some help, really, to be honest with you, because um, I'm not going to go and trust his eyes now, but I think he needs some help. You cannot become a legend with your mouth. You cannot achieve what you are not able to achieve with your foot on the pitch of play as a footballer. You cannot achieve it outside the pitch with talking and with podcast. Before Obi Mikel made it in football, Josu Joseph housed Obi Mikel in his house and fed him. I bet you all didn't know this. He helped Obi Mikel become what it is today. My friend Josu Joseph is not a beggar. He's doing well. Although he's handicapped because of the attack accident he had. And that's an Olympic gold medalist and an MON of that, you know? In spite of all the help you gave Obi Mikel, please let's ask ourselves, has Obi Mikel ever once gone to say hello to Joseph? All right, that's Songo Gochukolise addressing Mikel Obi 
and also addressing things concerning him and how he spoke about his family. Felt he shouldn't have called his family beggars and always asking for money, and that Mikel Obi shouldn't have said that he is one of the worst coaches he's ever that has ever coached him because they only had they had the personal rift. Uh, and that was a low blow. But but that's sad now. What can somebody tell Mikel to stop his podcast, please? Because he's one day one wahala. But he's making money from the podcast. You can't stop him from doing that. But he's, he's, so that's why you're destroying people's lives. He's also making money. But please, you know, I have an answer. Okay, it was for AB. I asked AB, have they finished paying all the athletes? She said yes. yes she said yes. she yes. talked to the minister, yes. <laughs> but you and I know a certain Silvanos who is also in this uh, business. Okay. Silvanos says, not all the athletes have received their money. This message came in yesterday. Mm. Okay. We'll you and it. I know this, Ivan. We'll look, no, we'll look into it. We'll uh -huh. look into it. Not all the athletes, so, but AB said the minister said all the athletes have got their money. But Sivano okay. is saying not all the athletes have received their money. As we prepare for the Olympics, Super Falcons, uh, as you said, Ashola, interesting to discover that she sees a psychologist regularly uh, to manage some of the psychological pressure of playing on the field. Uh, but she's also come out to say that Nigerians can be unfair in their criticism of footballers. So she was saying that, yes, you know, when, when times are good, it's great to celebrate. But she feels that Nigerians can be a little bit on the harsher side uh, when it comes to criticizing um, our Nigerian, own footballers. Nigerians have harsh ass. The Brits. That's exactly what I wanted to say. Is, was it just yesterday when, or the day before yesterday, mm. we were talking about the headlines around Ronaldo with the Portugal match? Even though Portugal won, every, there's some uh, media that still found a reason to castigate to him and him. to, you know. So, uh, but I think for me, the silver lining in that in in her interview was the fact that she says that she sees a psychologist regularly, just so she can stay above uh, above the game mentally and psychologically. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's so easy. Easy for us and to she can the say that because she can afford it. Mm. How many female, how many female footballers can actually afford it? Is so maybe the team okay, needs to get super, them a team psychologist. Super Falcons, yes. uh, nine-time African champions, uh, making it to the Olympics now, uh, the first time since 2008. Yes. When we discussed this subject yesterday, it was a complaint by Onome uh, who was comparing herself to Mata or Brazil. Uh, she's 41. She's and not. Doctor, she has, I actually want that. She has every right well, in our own in our in our own in our own career. She has every right to be able to match up to Mata. Mata hasn't really. She has yes. Mata plays well, for Brazil. Mata team. of Brazil is the highest goal scorer. You know, I for agree. Brazil. In but the she's a defender. Now, maybe is the defender, and she's been distinguished over the years. And you can look at it since 2003 when she made that debut okay. till date. But on she also on AB also holds the record of being the only African player, male and female, yes. who has been at the uh, World Cup six, six times. times. A record six times. But so. she's 41, yes. and now she's not been included. Francis uh, Odega yeah. is also excluded. But the one that surprises me is uh, Ashley uh, Plumtire. Plumtire, you know, not uh, included uh, in, in that list. She's but the, the, the big issue is how are we going to fare? We're going to meet Brazil yes. on... Uh, July 25, mm -hmm. we will meet uh, Spain, uh, July 28, and then we will meet Japan. And yeah. these are superpowers, <laughs> even in uh, women's uh, football. Uh, but, you know, we can only encourage them to do well. Now, as for Manchester United, Manchester United has a total of 1,150 staff. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the review was commissioned, or, you know, Sir uh, uh, Brayfield, yeah. you know, was asked to lead the review committee, and now they are going to Set that set adrift about 250 of the staff. Yeah. The last time they won the anything substantial was in 2012 2013. So the performance does not match the amount of money that they are spending. Uh, well, what you big club? Yes, but they say they want so to they cut costs. The money. They want to cut costs. And they're one of the richest clubs in the world. So they should be wasting the money. They're 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 waste. want to, they want to People cut. are being employed. They're getting fully employed at Manchester. Okay, party. today in Jan Johannesburg, the CAF is going to have his draw. We're in Port One. Yes, you know, are. the AFCON. And we've been told that uh, AFCON 2025 will mm -hmm. start in December yes. and end early 2026. We don't have a coach yet. Yes. I will prepare. We don't have any major match for now. And so finally, take the time. and finally, Mark Cavendish. Mm -hmm.
Das ist nicht. <lacht>